Good morning, church. Let us, as we gather together, begin in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And may the peace of our risen Lord be with you always. As we prepare, once again, we call to mind our sins and our failings, and as we seek God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you came as light to banish darkness. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came as the way, the truth, and the life. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you came to save us from our sins and to offer us new life. Lord, have mercy. And may the love and the mercy of our God free us of our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. May St. Dominic come to help, come to the help of your church by his merits and teachings, O Lord. And may he, who was an outstanding preacher of your truth, be a devoted intercessor on our behalf. For we ask this in the name of our Lord and Redeemer, Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives forever and ever. reading today comes from uh, from this book we speak God's wisdom mysteriously hidden a reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians chapter 2 verse 1 through 10 when I came to you brothers and sisters proclaiming the mystery of God. I did not come with some validity of words or of wisdom, for I resolved to know nothing while I was with you, except Jesus Christ and, the, and him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear and much trembling, and my message and my proclamation were not within persuasive words of wisdom but with demonstrations of spirit and power, so that your faith must, might rest not human wisdom, but in the power of God. Yet we speak of wisdom to those who are mature, but not wisdom of the ages, nor the rulers of the ages who are passing away. Rather, we speak God's wisdom mis mysteriously hidden, which God predetermined before the ages of our glory, in which none of the rulers of this new age knew. For if they had known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But then it is written, what the eye has not seen, and the ear has not heard, and what has not entered the human heart, what God has prepared for those who love him. This God has revealed to us through the Spirit, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial hymn, Proclaim God's marvels, deeds to all nations. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all you lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Announce his salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations, among all people, his wondrous deeds. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Give to the Lord your families of nations. Give to the Lord glory and praise. Give to the Lord the glory Do his name. Claim to marvelous deeds to all the nations. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the world firm, not to be moved. He governs the people with iniquity. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Luke chapter 9 verses 57 to 62. As Jesus and his disciples were proceeding on their journey, someone said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus responded by saying, Foxes have dens and birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. And to another he said, Follow me. But that one replied, Lord, let me go first to bury my father. But Jesus responded to him by saying, Let the dead bury the dead. But you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to my family and my home. He said, No, no one who sets their hand to the plow and looks to what was left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. By our baptism, we are all commissioned to preach the gospel. St. Francis put it, you know, to preach the gospel always and, if necessary, use words. Or in other words, you know, by your example, preach the gospel by the way we live our lives. We're called to be Christ for one another. We're called to be faithful to the gospel. St. Dominic founded, of course, the Arger of Preachers, the Dominicans. And they are, of course, known for, to be uh, preachers of the word, teachers of the word. And the gospel today for his feast day is all about preaching the gospel, being committed to that task. Not looking backwards to what could have been, not looking back to our old lives, not worrying about other things that are behind us or left behind, but to commit ourselves and to fix ourselves forward to the task and to realize that that will come with some privation, some difficulty sometimes. People don't always want to hear the gospel. We, um, a couple years ago, um, I was in a meeting with the Archbishop of St. Louis who had been writing a lot about um, immigration and a man wrote him a letter saying, you know, I've been a Catholic all my life, I'm 80 years old and if, you know, these people are what the church says are my neighbors and the people I'm supposed to love, well, then you can have your church, I'm leaving. So even in our latter years, sometimes we want to pick and choose parts of the gospel or we want to define things, you know, that fit our lifestyle or our choices or our way of viewing things. But Jesus tells us we have to take the God, fix our lives to the gospel, not to part of it, but to all of it. I had another friend used to teach. She was a theology teacher and a storyteller by trade, and she said the the scripture passage that you find the most difficulty with is the passage that was written for you. She encouraged people to wrestle with the scriptures, to wrestle with what is difficult rather than just kind of skipping over it and pretending it's not there, gluing a couple pages together, but instead to really focus on that and to, to listen to what God is trying to tell us. What is God calling us to do in these difficult passages? What is God calling us to live in? The middle example here sounds heartless. Ah, let the dead bury the dead. But we are children of light and life. And Jesus is just telling us to choose life, not death. To choose the new and not the old. But to be fixed on the kingdom. Because the kingdom is all about life salvation and redemption and that is after all what each of us wants so let us turn
turn to offer our prayers to God. And let us pray for the church, that Christians everywhere will be committed to the gospel. And in living it and proclaiming it with their very lives, we pray. For the ardor of preachers, for all of those Dominicans throughout the world who are committed to living and teaching and preaching the gospel, that, Lord, my, that our Lord will continue to call them, numbers to them, that they might continue to fulfill this mission faithfully and truthfully, we pray. Let us pray for peace and justice in our world, for an end of oppression, for an end of poverty and strife, for all of those right now who are struggling simply to put food on the table and a roof over the heads of their loved ones, we pray. Let us pray for the sick and the suffering, for all of those who are ill, and seek healing, whether it be in body, mind, or in spirit, we pray. For health care workers, for all of those who work as doctors, nurses, technicians, as in the service center, the janitors, the volunteers, for all of those who've had to kind of step up to care for family and become um, not only mother, daughter, son, father, grandchild, but nurse and doctor as well, we pray. We pray for the dead and the dying for all of those who've gone before us in faith. Lord, we pray for those who mourn and grieve, that you might be their assurance, and that you might strengthen us with the news that the tomb was found empty. We pray. I'd like to pray also for um, Father Tom Santa and Father Bernie Carlin and their classmates. This week they celebrated their 47th anniversary. So we pray for all of them. Joe um, Tobin was one of their classmates, so Cardinal Tobin in New Jersey. And for, um, for all of those um, celebrating anniversaries, we pray. Almighty God, we surrender these prayers and the unvoiced prayers of our hearts as we ask all these things in the through the intercession of our Mother Perpetual Help and in the name of Christ our Lord. Bless, O Lord, these gifts through this produce of the earth, fruit of the vine, work and toil of human hands. May it become for us our spiritual food and our spiritual drink. God forever. Pray, my sisters and my brothers, let us pray that these gifts, mine and yours, may be found worthy and acceptable by our good and gracious God. Amen. 
Attend mercifully to the prayers we offer you, O Lord, through the intercession of St. Dominic. And through the great power of this sacrifice, strengthen by the protection of your grace those who champion the faith. For we ask this through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created us, and when we were justly condemned in mercy, you redeemed us through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty. Dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with all the host of saints and angels in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus the Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, he broke it. Passing it to his disciples, he said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup filled with the fruit of the vine and once more giving thanks and praise, passed it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of our faith, save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, your clergy, religious, and all your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, and Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and Martyrs, with St. Dominic, St. Alphonsus, Servant of God, Theobomen, and all who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit 
to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus the Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And so let us pray now as our Lord instructed us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may all be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, Peace. It is my peace that I give to you. Look not, Lord, upon our sins, but look instead upon the faith of your church and graciously grant to her gifts of your true and lasting peace and unity in accordance with your holy will. For you live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, just peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who comes to take away the sin of the world. Bless, joyful are all who are called to the table of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Once again, we'd ask you to leave your kneeler down where you are, and if you'd like to help us clean, we would much appreciate it. Um, next Saturday is, um, of course, the Feast of the Assumption. Um, this year, I believe, it isn't a day of obligation, although there even Sundays aren't because all that's been suspended for time being. But nevertheless, we will be celebrating that feast next Saturday. Um, for anyone, you want to spread that around. Feast. My sister always says, since it's her birthday, she said, the, the church always has a special mass for me. So I said, I think you're a far cry from Mary. But um, anyway, let us stand. I know she's watching Mass, so that was for her. The peace of the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This Mass has ended. Let us go to live and to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ.